Okay, we're rolling. Whenever you, now you want me to look at you, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 He'll tell you where to look. All right. Sure. You ready? Sure. This is Stu Taylor. Joining me now is Jan Stewart. He's the managing director and head of global energy research for Credit Suisse. Couldn't think of anybody better here, Jan, than to talk about what's going on right now, not only in the economy in America, but overseas with liquidity problems, banks not loaning money, uh, two to three trillion dollars on the sidelines. Where do you anticipate we're going in terms of, of creating that, that cash flow through the system to, to, to provide a stimulus? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's fair. There is an awful lot of money sitting on the sidelines, right? Uh, there is an awful lot of uncertainty. We see it. We're a bank. Uh, we're a trading house. Uh, we, I work with the equity guys. I work with the fixed income guys. Trade flows are extraordinarily low. Uh, and it's all about the uncertainty. It's all about not knowing what is the direction in Europe going to be? What is the direction in the United States going to be? Are emerging markets still growing? And in that sense, oil and oil demand are a neat little barometer of what is really economic activity globally, right? And the misconception is that somehow the world is stalling out. Global economic growth is stalling out. There isn't enough and, and, and people are gonna have to do more with less, so to speak. Uh, when you look at things more closely, when you look at things on a grassroots level, so to speak, in Latin America, in the Middle East, even in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, uh, things are moving. The world is growing. What we do as, as a, uh, a class of analysts and observers in places like New York, London, Amsterdam is we look at ourselves. The US economy is not doing well. The European economy is not doing well. Just about everywhere else you go, things are booming. But, right? but this is a double-edged sword mm -hmm. because you don't want great, <coughs> too large a growth rate accelerated. Sure. It creates problems. China, 9, perhaps up to 15%. Then it creates problems. Where sure. do you get the balance? And then, in terms of answering that question, what about the balance in terms of our limit before we have dramatic effects on the economy in terms of how much per barrel for oil, which is translated to the pump where we had threats of five dollars a gallon? Sure. Uh, there's a counterproductive point. You know, it's like your blood pressure. You've got to keep it within a certain sure. range or your yeah. HDL. Or and and in that sense, totally fair point. Uh, I would argue that there is an output gap. Uh, we are not fully uh, employing everyone in the Western world. Uh, in much of the developing world, we had an inflation scare early last year. We had consequent tightening in economies like Brazil uh, and that of China. Um, the happy medium is that little bit more growth in, uh, the, in the developed economies, Europe, the United States, and just about steady as we go, as she goes right now, in the developing world. The developing world Inflation has come off quite significantly across most economies, so we're not overheating the developing world. China, 8%, probably a good number. Over time, that probably becomes 6% per annum growth. Brazil, 3 to 5. Uh, pick a number, right? A little bit less than the past five years in emerging markets. Significantly more growth required in North America and Europe. So the fine balance is a little bit up. Global economic growth last year, about 3% probably be better off if it were 4%. What do you tell the investor uh, in terms of where to go, in terms of value or growth, sector buying, or just to hold on to your money? No, the, um, uh, in terms of where the value for growth is, you know, I'm an oil guy, right? Uh, I think there is terrific value in the production of hydrocarbons for the time being, uh, gas and oil, not so much coal. Uh, and that, that value should be there for at least another three to four to five years, right? Uh, but the real value is going to be in two things. One, how can you use that energy more efficiently, i.e. new technology, new cars, new drivetrains, new ways for making stronger cars that are big, lighter, right? Uh, that would be number one. Uh, number two is new energy sources, right? And I don't know what they are solar, wind, biofuels, but of the next generation, that's just stepping stones to what will be uh, ultimately replacing oil. Uh, are they intellectually equipped, the, the investing demographic, to ignore what they see in here? Are they, are they too victimized, as the average consumer and investor is, by hearing about things like Solyndra and all the adverse publicity revolving around alternative energies? Which uh, it's, it's like with everything else, right? I mean, we have a knack in this country for politicizing a few things, right? We have a, lack and, uh, a knack in this country for trying to make things seem too simple and for disfiguring 
that truth, right? Uh, I would argue that the successful investors are evidently plenty smart enough, right? Uh, is there a successful investor behind every day trading desk? No. Right? Is the American public at large uh, easily swayed by very silly political arguments? Apparently, right? Uh, sure, I mean, you, where do you want to start? I, mean, I don't want to put an economist hat on you, but uh, from that standpoint, in terms of what we address first, uh, if, if you're looking at the government, you're looking at our increased uh, uh, debt, approaching $16 trillion here. Uh, the same thing with deficit and escalating costs. How do you analyze this? Yeah, well, in an economy such as the United States, in an economy that is fortunate enough uh, to have at its base a growing population, uh, in an economy uh, that, that, like the United States, is terribly stable in terms of legal systems, uh, education, uh, that is richly endowed with arable land, uh, water, uh, natural resources of any and all kinds. Uh, in some such economy, debt is a static thing. What it really should be about is growth, right? Grow that economy, get people to work. People that work have money, can pay debt. People out of work are gonna just add to debt. Well, you, the you, debt you, is a secondary concern. You, and you did add an element here that I, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to incorporate, it may be a little tangential for you, water. Are we looking at the big water craze coming in a decade or two? Depends on where you are in this country, right? I mean, in Las Vegas, yeah. yeah. Uh, Southern California, yes. Uh, New York, not so much, right? Uh, there are parts of this country uh, that are probably not great at supporting uh, millions and millions and millions of McMansions, right? Uh, there are other parts where you have more water than you know what to do with, right? Uh, as a whole, the United States has an awful lot of fresh water, significantly more than that other nascent superpower, uh, what would be China. All right, in conclusion, uh, first High Alpha Energy Conference, your impressions? No, it's a good conference, right? It's a, it's a, it's a seriously good topic, uh, energy, uh, and what that future might be, what the future of that energy might be. Uh, it couldn't be more timely. Jan Stewart, thanks so much for joining us. Anytime.